The fast Fourier transform or FFT is without exaggeration one of the most important algorithms created in the last century. So much of the modern technology that we have today such as wireless communication, GPS and in fact anything related to the vast field of signal processing relies on the insights of the FFT. But it's also one of the most beautiful algorithms you'll ever see. The depth and sheer number of brilliant ideas that went into it is just astounding. It's easy to miss the beauty aspect of the FFT since it's often introduced in fairly complex settings that require a lot of prerequisite knowledge such as the discrete Fourier transform, time domain to frequency domain conversions, and much more. And to be fair, to get a full appreciation of the applications of the FFT, you can't really avoid any of these ideas. But I want to do something a little different. We'll take a discovery-based approach to learning about the FFT in a context that you are all familiar with polynomial multiplication. The way I see the structure of this video, it's all about starting with some common ground and then slowly asking questions that will hopefully prompt you to discover the truly ingenious ideas behind the fast Fourier transform. The setup here is simple. We're given two polynomials and want to find the product. Our task will be to design an efficient algorithm for this problem. Mathematically, we know one algorithm to multiply polynomials by repeatedly applying the distributed property. All of you have perhaps instinctively been applying this algorithm since any algebra class. Hi everyone, my name is Thomas Kim. Today is April 5th, 2021. This is my third episode about Fourier transform and FFT from scratch. We will learn how to multiply polynomials using matrix or value representation of polynomials. I would highly recommend you to watch this video. I watched this video several times. This video gave me lots of ideas about how to use matrix, not only for FFT or DFT. I would highly recommend you to watch this video. To follow my current session, I assume you have watched my previous video, Solving System of Linear Equations of a Complex Number Using Scaled Pivoting. Please double click this link. If you haven't watched this video, you may not be able to follow my current session. Show more in the download source code section. Episode FFT002, please double click this link. Show in folder, ungib it, rename 03 value representation. Copy, paste it to your working folder. Now start Visual Studio Code. Open your working folder from folder 03, double click FFT.cpp. Control B. We created this file in our previous episode. I would highly recommend you to watch my previous videos about Fourier transform. I will arrange side by side like this. Here, for the test value representation FFT interpolation. Copy this function name, paste it here, disable it. We will define using point t std pair double double. The first component represent x, the second component represent y. We define oro a oro x a represent this polynomial. So, return x times x, the first term x square plus 3 times x plus 2 semicolon or b or x, return 2 times x square, 2 times x square plus 1. We defined polynomial A, polynomial B, AB. Now, SED vector point T, P, 
point t, the first point is minus 2, 0, point t, minus 1, 0, point t, 0, 0, point t, 1, 0, point t, 2, 0. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. The values of y is 0. 0, 0, 0. Now, for size t i, i less than p represent point. Point size plus plus i or x, y, p, i. We extract x and y component of a point. Now, y, we evaluate y component. Initially, y components are all zero. We call a, x, we call this polynomial times b x. So c x equals a x times b x. Now stream p p. We calculated all points of p by multiplying polynomial a polynomial b. Now, using matrix T matrix, we can use any matrix type. I will use scalable fast matrix. Double or row count P size or column count row count plus one. Matrix T M row count column count. We created row count by column count matrix M for size T I I less than row count plus plus I or x p i first x zero x one x two etc. or y p i second y zero y one y two and so on for size t j j less than row count plus plus j please note that this is row count because column count is one greater than row count or n double j n represent power of each term 0 1 2 3 M, I, J, S, D, D, power, X, N, X, power, 2, N. Out of this inner block, M, I, row count, equal Y. The last columns index is row count. Now we form the matrix stream M M and there now we solve this matrix M or C we are evaluating coefficient matrix solve using scaled pivoting we pass M stream Coefficient of Cx ascending 
power order. C and L copy paste. I forgot quote quote descending power order. We can use talk play fun reverse. Now I will remove blank lines. Start your Intel compiler CD003 value representation DPCPP QSCD C20 F no SQL EHSC FFT.CPP tbbmallc.lib ot.exe hit enter I made typo clsd so from a b we created a matrix like this then we solved this matrix using matrix solve using scaled pivoting then coefficients of c this c descending power order 26532 26532 using matrix we evaluated multiplication of polynomials a and b the coefficients of c 26532 26532 Now let's try with the clan compiler CD003 value representation clan plus plus SDD C plus plus 20 FFT dot CPP L TBB L TBB MALLOC O c.exe hit enter clsc clan compiler also works successfully so we defined two polynomials and we evaluate the coefficient of the multiplication of two polynomials then we form the matrix using points of the polynomial C. Then, by solving this matrix, we evaluate the coefficient of C. Of course, solving matrix is inefficient. That's why we are learning FFT.